Yay! As you can see, we're now back in the Barbie hut, or what I've so kindly taken it to as the Hobbit House. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to my channel. Before I continue, I would just like to say thank you to all my new subscribers and my current subscribers. You guys do give me the confidence and courage to do more videos and to show you stuff like this. I've probably had this thing for about six months now, but I'm not keeping track exactly how long I've had it for. But nonetheless, as we've used it, I've noticed some tiny little issues with it. One of the main thing is like where you put your trays or your drinks. Now what you can see here is obviously two of the shelves. In this video I'll be showing you how they were made and in the second video I'll show you how to do the little tiny uh, units I've got around the side to hold all the glasses. So sit back, enjoy, I hope you enjoy it anyway, and to all you, all you new subscribers, welcome. Don't forget to watch all the other videos, I'm sure you'll find them entertaining and enjoy. So we're back in the workshop. As you can see, I've done a couple of additional touch-ups. Like for example, I now got white walls. Makes a massive difference. Makes even more of a difference because you can actually see my lights better. I've done a couple more additional features. I've got a couple securing bracket. One set there, one on the other side. And I've got also a little bit of a storage thing there. Believe it or not, now you know these little uh, fancy wine bottle things again? It's in that wooden box with the slider. That's what it is. I just simply stuck it to the underside. And you know what? Open it up. Nice bit of simple storage for you to obviously keep your remote to change the colours for your lights, which one always has in their workshop. You can go to smooth, and it, I don't know how that's quite smooth, but there's a smooth button. It looks very similar to the flash to me, but that's the way it is. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna leave on white, because I don't wanna have a fit. So, there we are. In that goes. There that goes. Back to the project. Right, I've been down to the local DIY shop. Americans call it Home Depot. We call it DIY shop, because we don't have depots or shops, nonetheless. This is a bit of pine that I picked up. It's roughly 30 centimetres wide by two metres in length. This would be ideal for some of the shelving which I'm gonna make. If not, uh, the offcuts I can use to make the little shelves or your wine things. Something like this, I think it was about 30 pound for this one sheet. Sounds like a lot of money, but I mean, it's, it's quite a size. So, and also it's rounded off as well and it's, it just makes better sense. Right, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the, the Hobbit house, measure up the, uh, measure up some places where I want the shelves to be, and then I'm going to cut them down to size. At that point, I'm then going to experiment which angle I need to take to um, to allow the door to open properly, but allow, allow to so when you sit down, because everything's at angles, you don't want to be bumping into the shelf, so I've got to obviously bear that in mind. So somehow toy around with how the shelf would look, and it's practical aspect of it and then once I'm done that I'm going to make up some brackets for it have a little play see what they look like see if they're strong enough and take it all from there that is basically the prototype of this once the prototype's done I'll then continue building the rest let's get on with making the shelf and working out the design for that first it's five o'clock somewhere eh? <laughs> Right, I've done a bit of playing around off camera because to be honest with you, it's a bit sort of complicated to get the camera in the right angle and explain how the seats and the door works and whatnot. So this is another shelf which I've cut, obviously pre-shaping, so just to, uh, just to explain to you guys. So obviously this is what it used to look like. I've now gone with that shape. Now the reason being for that is because technically, when you're in the Hobbit house, this is at an angle. So this is where another bench seat is going. So as you sit down in this section, if this shelf was square, and I'll use use a square for reference, but this was square, as you would have sat down there, your shoulder would have hit that part of the shelf. That's why I had to cut that part out, so you didn't hit your arm. Then I had the other issue with the door, as the door opens up, again, if you had that bit of shelf sticking out, that door would continuously hit into that corner and slowly damage the door. So each corner, or each edge, came in at different angles. So what I've simply done is, I found the Goldilocks zone of it so which is take the same amount off out of each edge and the reason being for that is simply to say it looks symmetrical so now that i've got my first shelf i'm now going to make the supports 
Right now, what I want to do with this shelf, I don't want four brackets going from, from back to front. I want to keep the bracket short, because one, I think it's, it looks better, more pleasing on the eye. But also what I want to try and do is actually put some copper pipe in and have a skirt, some sort of decorative feature. So obviously I'm going to do that. I can't have a bracket going from the back to the very front. So what I'll do, I'll bear that in mind. This is 30 centimeters deep. I think what I'll go for is 22 deep, because then that'll give me eight centimeters to play around with. So I think, I think that's plenty. plenty. So 22 deep. That'll be the depth of our brackets. Now I'll do it, I want to clean tongue off and this beveled edge as well. So there's our blank. Now what I've, I've done, again, I've done a bit of mucking around off camera. To be honest with you, you don't want to see me sitting there scratching my head. But um, I've roughly come up with my own calculation, which is what I'm going to do, I'm going to measure a centimetre to the edge here, because this is how deep I want it to be, but also I don't want this massive lump. So what I want to do is start from gradual measurement here and then work our way up to get bigger and bigger and bigger. But I don't want this height, see? Plus, I've got bear in mind I'm going to get two brackets out of this. So what I'm going to do, just for safety aspects, measure a centimetre there and then measure three centimetres here. Now, just like dot to dot, if we just literally mark these two lines up, Right, so I've marked them up now, and this is what you should have left. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to cut this section off and cut within the lines. And the reason being for that is so we can actually plane them down together later on. Right, so now they are cut out. And yes, before you go on, I know what I've done there was extremely dangerous. You should have a proper guard with something like that. But that'll be another video when I actually get around to making it properly. At the moment, that's just a handheld circular saw I've just stuck to the underside so I haven't actually got any real depth control or angle control neither so yeah that what I've done was dangerous but I'm professional I know how to do things safely in a dangerous way so back to the video here's our two brackets bracket there bracket there we got good depth that's great I'll probably bring that in making sure that this measurement along the front here you can't see my hands in the way. Making sure that this measurement on the front here is the same on the side. That means I can actually then bring my copper around. But I don't like the, the angle that is. It's too sharp. So what I've decided to do is get one of the pieces. I'm actually going to mark out seven centimeters off that. Draw a line down there and then cut that bit off as well. And now it's time to plane down to the lines. Make sure the bottom face and the back face are square with one another, they flat. Place it in Z vase. So I'm going to plane these two bits until I reach that line. And now we're going to take all this lot off down to that line. Right, so now that we've taken our edges down, obviously playing them together so you know they are 100% identical to one another. Now it's starting to take shape, but there's still something not quite right with it, and it can be easy rectified, and that's simply just by softening the corners, by taking them off at a 45 degree angle, 75 degree angle, whatever the angle that you want. In fact, it's just by getting rid of that sharp edge, it can actually make the unit feel a lot softer. Right, so now your supports are now made, designed, finished, what we now got to do is find out where they've got to go. I'll pre-drill these holes and secure that onto there. Now what we've got to do, work out our copper. Right, here's my thinking. That there, obviously the opposite side, and that here. Probably make these bottom tails a little bit longer so it sticks or sits a little bit further down. But nonetheless, have some copper going across, bend it and connect onto there. And the reason why this is here is not the one that makes it easy for me to do the copper part, but it gives makes it a little bit more sturdy because obviously you've got that bit actually sitting there. Good old fashioned spring bender. Because I should be able to get something like that. Right, so we're now almost completed. 
I've got to do a couple more stages uh, yeah I've, I've got to, before I fix these in place I've got to use these as a template for the second shelf there's only two of this type and there's two of a bigger type so I don't need to use these as a template I will then glue these together by well, those two methods you can use a solder like the good old-fashioned method but you will have that solder ring around each joint which I don't really want or the other method is good old-fashioned super glue this stuff will actually stick metal. Once it's dried, I'm going to polish it up with some good old fashioned wire wool and then to make sure that you keep the shininess, I'm going to use lacquer just to spray over it, then stick this back into place and then fit it. And hopefully it'll be top notch. I should be in a well ventilated area, which I'm not, but I'm not going to do a lot of it. I'm just going to do a light little dusting. It's all you need, uh, otherwise it will start running and you start getting you know, just a little main. So ever so slightly, it's like a little dusting. Don't forget to give it a good shake. Give that half an hour dry. Then we should be able to put it onto this. We're almost good to go. Now the lacquer has now cured on my copper, get the glue. I'm going to plonk a nice healthy dose into my hole. It's about halfway full or half empty. All depends how you see like. Now normally this stuff takes about 24 hours to go off, so I've got plenty of work in time. Plonk it in, and there you go, just let that dry and we'll be ready to install. All four shelves are now done, let's get in the hut to install them. And there we are, they are finally installed. Don't they look lovely? There's this little bit of copper trim going around the bottoms. I think this gives it a little bit of extra crisp, very inexpensive, and yet makes such a big impact. And quite simply, you don't have to worry about balancing things on stools or chairs anymore. There we are, wonderful. The simple things in life. So that is it for the end of this video. So once again, thank you for watching all the way to the very end. I really appreciate that. The second video will be out as soon as possible. Please stay tuned for the next video of how I'll be showing how to make cup shells. Thank you for watching.